your weld gives you the framework of how to think about it but the confidence is afforded to you through consistency and it's this is the other hand of what you gain when you practice hard is the outcome the confidence within understanding that when i consider this to my fullest i will have the ability to affect the outcome of any situation that i put myself in in one way or the other i can give myself a chance a chance that's what you're looking for that's all that anyone has is just a chance at an opportunity you log into a game and you hit play that is another opportunity to give yourself the best chance possible that is what you're looking for none of this stuff just wins the game outright for you also let's flip that none of this stuff just outright wins the game for them they still have to execute they have their own weld they are trying to inflict their game plan upon you and your team to the best of their ability but they still have to execute they still just want the best chance that they can get for themselves they are still just operating off of a chance understanding that is what allows you to use your weld in really difficult situations you're still just stacking up those small percentage points for a chance at winning you gotta force them to win if they are going to win you have to make them make themselves win no mistakes on your part your weld isn't full of well this is how i make a mistake number one right here and mistake and mistake and mistake right here and i'm gonna put a mistake in between over here and this mistake i want to make this mistake a lot and it has to do with my skills and not taking the right one and then i want to make this mistake every time i walk into the arena um, I'm just going to not pay attention and not do something that would afford me a really easy advantage. And then I want to make a really big mistake by just not paying attention for like the first five minutes of the game to do with anything on the entire map. I'm not going to look at other people's lanes. I'm not going to figure out where their jungler is at any point. I'm not going to like that is what your non-existent weld involves right now. Is just a bunch of fucking mistakes that you're making over and over and over and over and over and over and over for no reason because you haven't put the thought in to identify well why the fuck do i do that i watched this vod the other day and i just was i killed the guy and then for some reason i just stood there in lane for like five seconds i just didn't know what to do afterwards okay well when that happens you have now taken the advantage that you gave yourself and you didn't just negate the advantage you actually fucked up so badly that you have created a deficit for yourself that your tempo is now so bad that you are so out of time that you actually took your advantage and gave them an advantage by just not doing anything that's actually one of the worst things that you could do early on is get a kill in lane one versus one within the first few minutes of the game and then not literally immediately back on the spot if they have teleport they're coming straight back in you are now you haven't done anything with the gold that you earned so this total gold even though you have relatively so much more than them at this point in the game, you haven't spent any of it. So now you are sitting on gold, which is detrimental to your overall power level at any given point in the game. And they are full health. And you probably wasted summoners killing them in the first few minutes. So now you are at best probably summoner neutral. You are way, way low in health. 
chances are a wave is showing up almost immediately so they get to make an immediate decision based off of the it's their turn it's their turn to make the best decision for themselves you think oh well, i just killed him i'm fucking in my pants and i'm still fucking i'm this guy's daddy and this guy can eat shit i'm gonna whoop his ass and then he comes straight back in the lane and he kills you right back because you fucked up your own advantage does that sound like someone that has a solid weld, a solid scarab in their pocket? That they have considered the game to a degree that they actually understand the advantages that they are creating for themselves? You're fucking up that badly within the first few minutes of the game off of something that you did correctly? How do you expect to win? If you have not figured out the objective that you are going for. Not just, I want to fucking win. That's my objective, of course. No, like, specifically, what objectives are going to lead to you winning when you get what you want? Why? Straight up. Have you considered the arena that you are working within? So, you can think about the entire map, the whole game, but is that genuinely useful? Because you got to focus on your lane first. And then how does your lane work in terms of the different objectives so we're not making that mistake anymore so we got minions we need to capture as many minions as possible we need those last hits gotta have them all of them as fast as possible as they come i want all of them not five not four not oh wow look at that i got all three cats and minions that uh, no all of them how do i get all of them what do i have to do do I get to just walk up to the wave and interact with the other character? I don't think so. We're not just talking about Zed anymore. You don't get to just do that for free in most matchups. And if you do, are you pushing that pressure point to its extreme? Are you forcing them away from the wave? Or do you get, are they just allowing you to kind of stand there? I would say either way, don't push your luck. Don't overextend if you can force them off the wave. Don't overextend by just hanging out and assuming that they're just letting you be there. Don't overextend by getting greedy and trying to take too many at a time, because if it's not your wave and it's not your control over it, getting greedy and overextending and just being around for no fucking reason is what gets you further and further off of the wave as time goes on. So now, how does your lane interact with minions? How does your lane interact with the terrain? Are you really good at working the terrain? So then. If your character is really good at terrain hopping, why are you just standing in the middle of the lane the entire time next to the minions just fucking hanging out vibing? I don't think so. That doesn't help anyone. Are you cornering yourself in the lane? Are you using your vision? Let's go with... I'm going to put roaming over here. There we go. This. I did it again. I can't undo that, huh? What does that button do? Nope. I needed to clean it up anyways. So now we got our AR and our OB. We got minions. And then this was lane, terrain. That's not how you spell lane. Started spelling terrain halfway through. I'm going to go T R R for terrain. There are two R's in terrain. I'm going to make that an AI. Train. <laughs> know what this says. <laughs> go T E R because I don't know how to erase, so I'm just going <laughs> to leave this here. <laughs> terrain. Lane. Vision, vision, what do you see? Wow, talk about one that really affects all of the other. How do your skills help you obtain vision? How do you see the arena for what it is? If it's all black, 
I don't care who you are, not good. You are not tracking their entire team the entire game with no vision. I don't care. Faker doesn't do that. It doesn't matter. You cannot also, you should not be assuming anything. You need to know for sure. That's why vision is so important. You need to be sure to give yourself the confidence to make the right decisions. If you're constantly second guessing everything that you have to say and to that you're thinking about, you're trying to tell your team what's going on. If you're lying to them, that's way, way worse than having said nothing. So vision, obviously extremely important part of the arena. So now we have our third aspect of the arena. And then minions, total gold. Let's go put this back up here. Big old G for gold. This is it. Get a little artistic with it. Give it a little shading. This is a big gold coin. We're all enamored by it, right? Big gold coin. This is it. How does all of this now affect how we think about the way that we earn gold in the game? We want to do it quickly. And we want to do it really well. We want to do it safely, right? We don't want to be compromised the moment that we go for it because that's a very very easy thing for them to play off of obviously that's the point of that interaction within the basis of the game that's what causes conflict that's what forces you to be around other people and understand also i'm gonna add this in real quick minions also give experience which in turn can be equated to how much gold you have in total, the total power level of your character. Experience is worth a lot in gold. The stats that you gain per your character is fucking just an enormous amount of gold as well. So now these two things are married together because you earn them at the same time in a lot of ways. Off of every objective, there is an amount of gold and EXP that you will earn that we can evaluate and determine how much we get from each objective. Also, there's, you know, base stats to do with the buffs that we gain from objectives that can also be determined with a gold value. So all of this stuff can be equated back to and measured by basically how much gold is it worth straight up? Is it just for you or is it for your entire team? This is all stuff to consider. That changes the way that you look at the game, especially depending on what lane you play. Are you a mid laner? How does that should affect the way that you can reach all of these objectives all over the place? If you're right here and centralized, all of these objectives are going to mean a lot different things to you than someone that's just in top lane or the fucking carry that's stuck to bottom for the time being, for whatever reason they think. And then your support. So how do you come back in and affect all the other lanes and all the objectives? What are you doing to affect the way that things are going around the map? It's not just what lane you're in. Consider all the different lanes when you're considering how much gold can be made. And then you think about, all right, so we're past minions now. So then what do we want to focus on? I'd say the next, let's go with, now it's, you know, let's go with, Void monsters. And then we'll do dragon. I'm not going to focus on the current state of balance within the game. Obviously, that's going to change. This stuff is going to be under constant 
evaluation. Obviously, like I've said, shit changes, balance changes happen to all of this stuff constantly. Jungle is constantly changing. But I'm going to leave that part to the lane situation for now. That'll be encapsulated within how you have thought about your lane. If you're a jungler, then all of this stuff means something very different to you than the top laner or the bottom laner. Because top lane doesn't give a shit about dragon nearly as often. And bot lane, support might, but ADC is going to have a hard time rotating for void grubs within the first few minutes of the game. You have to seriously consider the fact that if theirs showed up, there's a still a very good chance that yours is not going to. And that's something to recognize, obviously. Are they gaining a good advantage on the other side of the map? Are they cross-mapping adequately? It could be the case. That could not be the case. That is going to inform how you take Grubs, how you take Herald, how you approach Baron eventually. And all of those things are worth different amounts of gold at different points in the game. But the relative amount of gold that you have in the game is worth different amounts throughout the game. So it has a similarly functioning weight relative to the point in the game that you're at, but they scale with the game. And void monsters are much more involved with helping you push lanes and your advantage in lane much more so than helping you team fight in any specific way. Whereas Dragon, the advantage there is you gain enormous team stats eventually that are worth a lot of gold. And then you get the soul, which is eventually worth the ultimate amount of stats plus bonus stats that you can add team wide. So as much as this is a laning effect to push lanes, this is for team fight effect to help you become stronger wholly as a team statistically. So then, taking all of this other stuff into account, your skills and your team skills and how they want to involve themselves in the objectives and the lanes how did all of this turn out did they use their skills did you use your skills adequately to affect laning phase are you using your skills in accordance with the terrain to get places quickly to affect objectives or do you have good vision so that you can see what they are going for and how they are approaching all of these objectives have you used your skills to accomplish these things? Have you used your skills that we've gone over to accomplish the way that you operate around minions, around void monsters, around dragon? Are you using what you have brought to the arena to affect objectives? And then in the middle of the game, when you're getting your ass beat, do you have a well-defined scarab in your pocket that you can say, guys, we have not done this, we haven't done this, we haven't done this. If we can do this, we can start doing these things again. And this is what we need to do to get back to winning. We, this, we want to win. We need to get back to this. So now my scarab is telling me, I haven't been doing this with my one of my abilities. It has not been leading to me being able to do this. And if I can do this well, everyone else can approach objectives. We give ourselves a chance in team fights. If I can drag this person over to the side with me because I'm in a position where no one else on their team except for their other strongest person can deal with me, I am creating a huge advantage for the rest of my team by doing something that I can do, by forcing them into a situation that I control amongst the chaos. I still control what I do by evaluating all of this stuff at the same time to do with one another. All of this stuff crosses over into itself. And how long did it take me? How, how long has this recording been going on for? 
an hour. Let's say this was just straight up an hour of development time. Not bad. I'd say that's pretty fucking good for how much we've considered here today. I'd say an hour of this quality information that we can really grab a hold of and do something that we can wield within the game. You can't take an hour to watch other people, not even just an hour today, an hour every day. You want to get better at something and you don't have an hour to spend thinking about how you can do it better a day, you don't want to get better at it. Or you can't afford to get better at it and you need to focus on other things. But an hour got me this. Obviously, I've thought about this game a lot, so it's a very abbreviated hour. But I have built up my critical thinking base and ability to be able to do something like this within an hour with the information that I have gained. This hour that I have spent doing this is absolutely worth all of the fucking heartache of just shitting your pants in game and just not fucking game is so hard all of my teammates are so shitty man oh my god you know what they are thinking the exact fucking same thing and some of them might have had a scarab going that you were just completely unaware of and completely worked against them and you couldn't tell what they were doing because you have not critically thought about a game plan in general ever not much less considering what someone else could be going for with their game plan or recognizing if they even have one in the first place. How do you think you're going to recognize that if you've never formulated one yourself? Unless it is just so obvious and they're just like 1405 when the first 10 minutes and it's like, oh, obviously this guy knows what he's doing. You can't learn from that, though, because he's just whooping a fucking poor, unsuspecting person's butt and they probably are on their way to moving past that skill bracket a lot faster than the other people in that game. I will say that as a generalization. But maybe not. Maybe they're just having a good game. Maybe you can learn something from it. But did you actually notice what they were doing the whole time? Can you equate what they did with a scarab? Make a scarab and then watch someone else's game that you know for a fact obviously has a game plan in mind. Watch like 10 of their games in a row. You don't have to sit there and analyze every second, but like you might want to because you might not be in a place where you understand the key objectives and key moments that have determined a lot about it. But when you see a character get played 10 times in a row and you have a good sample size of this is what it looked like when it did really well and this is what it looked like when it did really poorly you can start to notice patterns and you can start to draw lines between what is actually occurring in the game and when it went well this is something that always happened and when it didn't go well this is something that was happening way too often you can identify those patterns. You can tell yourself, hold on. I've seen that happen before. I've seen something of a version of that, and it might be a really specific thing that helps that character shine. There are certain jungle clears where if you don't do a very specific aspect of what their kit involves, you just completely get fucked through your jungle clear. But if you use their skills properly, oh, who would have thought? Use your skills properly. Then you accomplish objectives and you work your way through the arena in a much easier fashion. And that's what you're looking for is those small details that you can put your finger on it and say, this is how this character operates. Whether you are playing it or playing against it, it's still just as important to know all of this stuff. And that's something to abuse when you're going against it. And that's something to protect yourself for when you're using it. And so you know, well, this is how I would abuse it. 
if I was, if I had to make them make me fail, this is what I would tell them to do. And guess what? I'm not going to let them do that straight up. And if they, a new, they figure out a new way to make me fail and I prevented that first avenue, boom. Now I am twice as informed about that situation. Thank you. Thank you, opponent, for showing me what happens when I don't take this into account. And guess what? Guess what I'm looking for? Number three thing that I have not taken into account that is going to fuck me up. I want to know what this is. I'm not hiding from it. I need to go find this so that this happens the least amount of times as possible. And then once I find this, guess what? Boom. Where's the next one? I want to try and find these almost I not you need to make sure that you're processing it properly. But in a sense, I almost want to find as many of these as I can at the same time, because that's also going to give you valuable information as far as. All of that stuff combining together absolutely makes a difference. They can do more than one of these things to you at the same time, most likely. And if they can't, then why? Why can they not? That's something to figure out. And it's still, how does all of this stuff, how, now, what is their well? What is their well doing for them? What are they, what have they shown you? What are they working with? What do they keep going back to? Which way do they keep coming from? Which way are they approaching? Is your vision adequate? Have you seen them come from where you thought they were going to come? Are you nailing them with their words? with your wards are you nailing their wards with your wards are you preventing their vision just as much as their vision is informing you about the way that they are thinking about the game it's all useful if you make it useful if they have been putting wards above your bot side and your the bottom of the map, red, that red or blue, that's blue, right? Doesn't matter. You are on the bot side, support. And they keep putting wards above your red and they keep putting. So we're bot side and we come through lane through here. If they keep putting wards in this bush leading around Dragon Pit, why do you think that they are doing that? If this ward is always a pink from them, they are controlling this intersection. What do you think they want to control? They want to control your raptors. They want to control your red buff. They want to control this corner avenue that leads to your tribe. They want to be able to get in here. What can they do? They can slip around your Krugs. They can come around to your side bush. They can access your lane before you get to tower. That tells you so much about what they're trying to do from one ward. Now, what are we going to do? That ward? Nope. Cannot. You cannot allow that ward to stay there. It gives them all the fucking avenue in the world to just get in whenever they want no more this ward has to go it gives them access to your vision all over the place it tells them when they do red when you do red when you show up to a red that they already did they know exactly which way you're going from there that information for them is fucking platinum Gold doesn't fucking even begin to start. That information to them is a bag full of fucking diamonds. Which way you're going, that tells them what you're going to be doing for the next fucking minute across the entire map. That tells them everything. Are, they, are you now lane ganking? Did you come back up through your try and into river? They probably have another word right there. If they're wording this, I'd say bot lane has definitely got this worded or at least this. So now they know at least you aren't up here past them. So now they have a line in the sand that they can operate around. They know where it's safe and they can keep coming closer and closer to your tower. They can keep cutting away the section of the map that you control 
if this is dark, I don't care how close it is to your side of the map, you do not control it. You do not know what's going on in there. And if you don't know, you're not making good decisions. But if you have an idea of what they're trying to do, they're holding this pink here, fuck that. You don't get this. And now when I clear this pink, I'm clearing up through into river and I'm taking the next one. I'm taking either river bush or I'm taking pixel brush. Or even better, I love this new fucking banana bush around the side. Throw a fucking pink inside of that bad boy. See what that information gets you. I fucking love. I find it necessary to pink or ward. I want to know what's happening in that huge section leading all through their bot side of river. Just because I'm bottom lane doesn't mean this information around mid is not extremely important. It is so pertinent to me and my safety in bot lane. It is like if you don't understand that, you're missing out on so, 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 so much to do with a game like this. If you cannot begin to draw the lines of reason towards what they are looking at, you have not thought about the game enough. Seriously, you are so fucking far behind. It's insane. And you don't even realize it yet. And this is a racing game we're talking about, by the way. So these people are not just like, they're not just ahead of you in how fast they got to a point on the map. They are miles ahead of you in terms of everything to do with every metric in the game. Their gold is more, faster, more quickly, more efficient. They are affecting more fights in a more powerful way. They have more gold, which means they have more items. And if they're a person that knows how to get a whole lot of gold really quickly, they probably also know what to do with that gold. So they're probably buying a fit items that are more power efficient, giving them the most power in the least amount of gold used to purchase it. And they're moving around faster than you. They are participating in more fights than you. And they're now, once they hit a certain break point, they're going to start taking your shit. And after a certain point, there's nothing you can do about it. Except just lay back and hope that they fuck up and just pray that they make mistakes. So that's your way back in, is now they have to fuck up. And that is the power of you giving yourself the best chance that you can. 